Dr. Howard Lux. I'm here with Wayne. Wayne is one of my patients. Uh, Wayne suffered from severe osteoarthritis of both of his knees. Um, he's agreed to come in and talk to us today about his disease, uh, the treatments that we eventually rendered, and his experience with us, and perhaps discuss some of his issues that he had before and after the process, his expectations, fears, and walk us through his recovery process. How are you today, Wayne? Very good, Dr. Lux. Super. Super. Excellent. So, as you know, we're going to be putting this online yes. to benefit other patients. And uh, you understand that and you agree that we I can do that? I certainly do. I um, certainly do. I think uh, it's a great thing. It's nice. a great thing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I was a school teacher for uh, 33 years. And at the same time, I also worked construction, which probably added to some of the pain and so on that I had in my disease. And I retired uh, in 2006, and uh, from then on, I traveled a lot of the country on uh, two wheels on a motorcycle. <laughs> when did you start to suffer from the symptoms of osteoarthritis? I would say it was probably got to be real bad about four to five years ago. And it got to the point where, up until I had the operation, I was almost incapacitated. I, I just couldn't even hardly walk. So it significantly affected your quality of life? Oh, oh, definitely, definitely. I got four grandchildren, and I couldn't do anything with them. You know, pop pop, let's do this, let's do that, and forget about it. I mean, I, I, I couldn't do anything, really. All the things that I enjoyed in life, fishing and hiking and going out, and uh, it, it just totally destroyed it. What treatments did you try before ultimately deciding to have surgery? I tried a lot of the over-the-counter type of uh, medications and stuff that they advertise, uh, you know, for pain and this and that. And it, it just really, it worked for a while. It, it did. It was, it was a good thing. And then finally, I was, I was just taking more and more. And it just, it just wasn't, you know, satisfying, you know, the need to get rid of that pain. I just couldn't get rid of it. When did the thought of a knee replacement first enter your mind? Did you find out yourself online? Did you talk to friends? Or was it here in the office with me? It was actually in 1998. I had orthoscopic surgery done on my right knee due to a, a construction accident. And I had torn the meniscus so bad that it could not be repaired. And they told me within four to five years, I would need a knee replacement. And then, at that time, back then, knee replacements were only lasting five to seven years, maybe, and you'd have to go in again. So I said, I'm not going to have to go through this twice. So I put it off and put it off until I finally made the decision. What were some of the other fears that you had about the procedure? You know, it, it, I really wasn't too afraid of... Uh, the actual operation itself, there, there's always the thought of having a foreign object, you know, in your body, it's not your own, and changing your body in a certain way that, you know, is this going to affect me even worse than, than the way I am now? And uh, probably the only other fear I had was being in a hospital itself. Sure. That's very understandable. <laughs> Did you do your research online? Did you talk to friends? Was it with me here in the office? I did a combination of all three. First of all, I talked to friends who had had you as their doctor. Then I went on your website and investigated, saw everything that was going on, and then made the appointment to see you. And after conversing with you over the options and things that uh, was available to me and some of the, you know, problems that could arise and things and so on and so forth, I, uh, I was just happy about it. I just, I, I had a positive attitude, in other sure. words, and that was, that, I think that was the biggest thing that, that you instilled upon me, a, a positive attitude through looking at uh, x-rays with me, going over all the stuff and saying, you know, that, that you were definitely in need of this. That's great. So you think that the interaction that you have with your physician should be an important guide? Uh, I, I would say definitely, definitely. And I was, I was just so comfortable with, you know, in, in your manner and in your explanations of everything. 
and showing me everything that was going on. Just, it just totally uh, made a big, it made the decision for me. I, I, there was no other decision to make. What was your day, that first day in the hospital, that morning in the hospital, like? Uh, I was, I was a little apprehensive, to say the least, and. Uh, you know, but then as things moved along, and then we finally got to the operating room, and then conversing with one of the nurses, it just happened to, I knew, uh, through a friend of mine, and then you, of course, being there, and uh, just saying, you know, we're about ready to do this, and, uh, you know, gave me the options, because I was having both done, and, you know, which knee is worse? You know, sometimes there is that very, very, very slight chance that I might not be able to do both at the same time, depending on, you know, my health and right. blood pressure and so on, which was kind of uh, also reassuring, too, that, you know, that you were not, the doctor was not going to take a chance and just do it because, you know, right. you want it both done. Right. And then that was that was very, very helpful. I just was, felt much at ease, and great. that was it. I was ready to go. So the first day after surgery, second day, was the pain what you expected? Was it not what you expected? I kind of had more pain before the operation than after the operation. I, I was in such bad shape that it, it just, the, the pain was just less than, you know, it, was, it wasn't the acute pain. It was a soreness more than it was a pain. And, and, and I was very pleased with, uh, you know, with the amount of pain that I had. I, I thought I expected more. But I was very, very pleased that it was a great. Now you've, uh, you, know, you were very goal directed, and you did your rehabilitation uh, as diligently as expected. As he knows, I tell everyone, I take thirty percent credit or twenty percent credit for a good knee replacement, and I give them seventy or eighty percent for effort. Uh, how much effort does someone need to put forth into the therapy, and for how long? And talking to uh, not only yourself but other people that were in the rehab uh, situation with me, you know, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and so on. I found that more people that I talked to that actually had their knees done that didn't follow through were having problems, right. that it was not going to happen to me. Right. And that gave me the motivation to really, I, I, I worked, there were people even at the rehab place, that, you just never stop. And I said, you know, I, I want this thing to work. And the determination of an individual, once they have it, I think is the big key to it. They have to follow through. Agreed. If they don't, I, I, I mean, it, it will not be a success. I don't care who the physician is, what their qualifications are, or whatever. If you don't follow through and, and be right there on top of it and doing everything that they tell you to do, it, it just won't happen for you. I agree. I tell patients all the time. Uh, that uh, they may not be a good candidate for surgery, and that's because I'm not quite sure they're going to do the rehabilitation. And you've proved that. Uh, if you're willing to, if you're willing to put in the effort, after I put in the effort, that's the best way to ensure uh, the best chance of a good result. So, as we talked about the other day, you're standing taller. You're, yes, I'm you're, back to six one again. <laughs> you're, you're looking better. Um, how has this changed your quality of life? Already, it's uh, made a big difference, even with my kids, grandkids and stuff. Uh, just myself, I'm able to walk. I have gotten to the point where everything is like a first. It's like another hurdle that I've gotten over. Uh, I walk the track. I'm up to, I started off at two laps, doing approximately a half a mile. After going through a rehab center, also outside physical therapy for a month, three sessions a week for an hour. And then I was on my own, and I continued. And walking the track every day except for rain, some rainy days, I went to the mall and walked around the mall just to walk, to get, to get things to keep it moving. And it made a tremendous amount of difference. I'm able to walk now. I'm able to do things again that I, I couldn't, I, I physically couldn't do previously. It's great. I'm even out playing pickleball, <laughs> which is, you know, and that, you know, once a week. And that's almost like tennis only on a smaller right. thing, but I mean, this is something, you know, that I used to enjoy doing. It's great. What would you tell someone who's on the fence? They're not quite sure. Uh, they're pretty miserable with their arthritis. Uh, 
uh, but they've heard some bad things uh, and they're on the fence about having a knee replacement. I would say that if you're really on the fence, go and really talk to some people that have had successes. Because the negative people are usually, as I said before, the ones that didn't follow through on physical therapy. My brother is a perfect example. He had one knee done about eight years ago, never went through all the physical therapy, and he's got problems. He just stopped going and didn't do what he had to do. And if you talk to people that have really had successes, do your homework, look at the doctors, visit, you know, get, get opinions and this and that, and find out uh, really what it's all about. And uh, I would suggest that don't wait as long as I did. I waited, as you know. I waited to the point where my knees were bowed, and I mean, I would totally bone on bone. And I, I just wish I had done it sooner, but the thing that kept me from doing it sooner was the technology. And now that the knees are lasting longer, you can expect, you know, to have them for a while rather than a short period and have to go through it again. Right. That was a big, uh, that was a big plus. It's great. Wayne, thank you very much, sir. Oh, you're the one to thank. You're the one that did it all. But you've done the effort and made me look good. I, I'm telling you, it's been great. It's been fantastic. It's awesome.